Hey, this is Vince Omega, and no, this is not a Dungeon Fighter video. Although it is related to Dungeon Fighter. Um, what I'm going to do in this video is actually show you how to um, map your controller using the Pinnacle software, the Pinnacle Game Profile software. Um, it's a game mapping software released by a company called Pinnacle, uh, and it's, it's not free. You have to pay thirty dollars for it, but it's it's pretty good. Um, I purchased it for myself, and you know I, I pretty much bought it because of um, the whole priest patch thing and the priest, well, classes in general. Um, you have the priest subclasses in general, including monk, get, gain a whole bunch of skills, and of course, um, with the control you can only do so much. So I decided to actually get a. Um, gaming software, gaming game mapping software, as opposed to the ones that actually come with the controllers that you buy, because um, programs like Pinnacle can actually allow you to um, set up trigger buttons as well, and I'm going to go into this program and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, the control I'm currently using is a Logitech one. Um, I don't, I don't like this controller, but I'm, I'm gonna to save those complaints for another day. Uh, but from this screen, what you can do is um, if you press the right trigger on your mouse, this allows you to make a quick assignment. Now, making a quick assignment will allow you to press any button on the keyboard, and now that button is assigned to whatever button that lights up on the image over here. Not all controllers have an um, image map. So you have to make sure you have the controller in front of you while you're doing this. If you happen to hit the wrong key, just hit the left key and then it'll bring up a menu. Yeah, it'll bring up a small new menu right here where you can actually um, issue commands. Oh, you can have set up pre... You can set up pre-install commands like complicated... Um, Complicated movements at the press of a button with the standard command. You can do the um, compound commands too, which allows you to do like um, cycles and double taps. Um, although double taps don't work out very well, there's a slight delay uh, with double taps, and that's not really ideal for a fighting game. So if you happen to want to um, give a button an alternate use, you want to actually set one of your buttons or your controller to be a trigger button. And you can do that through um, behavior modification by um, setting one of the buttons to a shift mode button. You got four colors blue, red, green, and yellow. You can apply force feedback if you want it to do that. You can also enable a button as a sticky button, where it's basically pressing that. And well, you're pressing it once will basically tell the computer that the button you pressed has been permanently depressed. Essentially, like you're holding down the button even when you let go. Um, again, I don't really recommend using that type of feature on a fighting game, so what you probably want to do is um, not enable any buttons as a sticky button at all. A rapid fire button. Um, the rapid fire feature should be your favorite feature, your Spitfire or anything like that. But um, I'll just side spit. Uh, rapid fire basically allows you to basically use that particular button in rapid succession. Now as a monk this is counterproductive because um, as you know your standard X attacks work in a particular rhythm. Um, in fact you attack faster when you time your attack well, well you time your attack to match your priest well your monk's um, fist fully extended so let's say you punch once if his fist is fully extended all the way out, if you press X again, he will rapidly attack again. Now, rapid fire kind of, um, well, rapid fire ruins that, and you end up attacking much slower. Sniper assistant. Well, I haven't used sniper assistant yet, so I can't really give you, um, any feedback as to how that works. I can go into it and see what it does. Okay, still not sure what that means. Uh, 
Of course, if you want to cancel any assignment to it, you can go to behavior modification, disable what you did there, and you can also remove assignment for any, um, basically any, um, keypad button that you assign to the button on your, your joypad. Now, when you assign one of your buttons as triggers, I have, um, I have, well, essentially what would be considered L1 on a PlayStation 3 controller, set up as a trigger button, and I also have, um, button number four set up as a trigger button as well. You can also change those, you can change the, the way the buttons behave by going from unshifted to one of the shifted colors. And basically, when, when you're holding down the, your, your toggle, or your trigger button, over here is what the buttons will suddenly become. Like buttons that you've given commands to while you're holding down a shift button. These are what you'll be able to execute while you're holding down that trigger button. Uh, for example, I don't have DFO, DFO up right now because it's under maintenance. But um, in game, I have button one set up as um, X or basically the attack command. When I hold down the shift key, well, hold down the blue shift key, which is um, basically the L1 button, attack becomes F1. And on my hot pad, I have F1 set up for the smash grab. So I can essentially go straight into a smash or cancel just by hitting XXX, holding down L1, and then hitting X again, which of course goes into Smasher instead. So it goes into Smasher, I can just let go and hit X again and do a quick Smasher cancel. Um, so it's um, pretty intuitive actually. I have um, like I have button one set up for Smasher cancel, and button two set up for machine for. A, basically a quick switch from um, what button four would normally be the space bar which is your skill number one button by default in game so it goes from skill number one well basically it goes from your buffing button to your machine gun jab button it says it's right there with smash uh, yeah, yeah basically the way I set up is right there with smasher like you could, I could go into Smasher and not have to um, have my thumb travel along them, basically travel a ways in order to go straight into um, Machine Gun Jab, which you'll be using. Well, if you get good using Monk, you'll be using both Smasher and Machine Gun get Jab in succession. Uh, yeah, it's success in succession from one another, wherever you're going from Smasher to Machine Gun Jab, or Machine Gun, machine gun Jab into Smasher. So it's a good idea to place them both next to each other. Um, I also have another sh shift key where I will hold down the buff button, and this is essentially for using items. So I won't have to actually reach on a keypad and hit number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six on my on a space bar. Um, instead, I can just hold down the buff button and use all my items on my hotkeys, my creature skill, and pull up, pull up the map. You can also give commands to the left stick and right stick, but it's not the way you um, would imagine it would be. But you can't really do a quick command here. Instead, what you would have to do is have some map to the mouse. You can map it to the WASD key. Well, basically, what that would basically mean is um, the toggles, well, the directions on the analog will be now mapped to WSAD, W being up, and A being down, S being left, and down being right. It doesn't work out that well if you use WASD on an analog stick because you'll probably end up doing moves that you don't want to do. I've tried it. Um, you can also map them to your arrow keys. Again, that's um, not a great idea, especially since um, Dungeon Fire Online already recognizes your analog. If you have an analog button, if you have an analog controller, it already recognizes your analog inputs. So you can essentially go into the game and go to the hotkey menu and just 
map your movement to that itself. You don't have to do the arrow keys. You can map your analog to your D-pad. Um, that's probably not a good idea. Because then you're kind of defeating the purpose of having the D-pad up there. Uh, you can map it to your mouse spring. Again, that's not good. You can map it to the full keyboard. And map it to, to the full keyboard is a little complicated. Um, like, for example, if you were to map it to the full keyboard, this is how it will look. Basically, doing certain movements what correspond to certain keys on the key on the keyboard. Now, Dungeon Fighter is not that complicated of a fighting game. You you essentially don't want to turn Dungeon Fighter um, commands into Street Fighter commands. You don't want to do half quarter punch, half quarter punch. Um, yeah, you don't want to do half quarter forward, half quarter forward, and any kind of punch command to do a basically a super Hadouken in a game where basically your most complicated command is just one half circle and of course the skill key so essentially what I'm saying is you don't want to map anything to the full keyboard for Dungeon Fire Online that may come in handy with um, I don't know I guess a shooter game um, but not in this game after you're done making your um, commands what you can do is it save and close I'm not going to do that since I already set up my, um, my controller after that you would hit OK hit play and then the control the game maps the controllers controls that you just set up onto the game and it makes a global hook and actually latches itself onto the game thus feeding your input from the controller yeah from the keyboard to your controller into the game and if you have a fast processor um, it doesn't give you any delay at all now I've tested Pinnacle on both my laptop when I had that piece of crap and my new computer which I'm using right now uh, on the laptop had a 1.6 um, gigahertz processor and it has two gigabyte two it had two gigabytes of RAM this computer, as of now, has 2.6 gigabytes. Yes, not gigabytes, gigahertz of processing power, and it's, it's actually dual core too, so it has two dies to calculate um, any type of um, computing. And I've upgraded the rig to have about four gigabytes for for memory. So, um, on the laptop, like I said, it would give you, it would give you a slight delay and it cause like frame rate lag or jitters when you're playing a game. But on this computer, I haven't experienced anything like that when using the trigger keys or anything like that. So, uh, yeah, if you're going to actually use trigger keys and of course in a, basically in a command intensive game like Dungeon Fighter you want to make sure that you at least have um, good processing speed so you don't end up suffering frame rate lag well that's it for now um, hopefully you got something out of this and now you know how I control my monk using a controller I use a mapping program Alright, this is Vince Omega signing off.